Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. An abandoned Detroit home and surrounding neighborhood taken over by, look at this, mm. illegal trash dumpers. Those living nearby very concerned for the safety of their children. Tonight, it's Help Me Hank to the rescue. Glad you're with us tonight for Local 4 News at 6. I'm Devin Skillian. Good evening. I'm Karen Drew in for Kimberly Gill. Right now is the time of year. Illegal dumpers make their move, but the city really is ramping up its efforts to stop them and help clean up the mess. Our concern investigator Hank Winchester live on the east side tonight. Hank, this is one of the bigger dumping sites that you've seen, I think. Devin, Karen, I mean, we just could not believe how much trash was out of here. Now, here's the good news regarding this abandoned home. You can see there's a lock here on the door. It is boarded up, but that trash was everywhere just 24 hours ago. Now, this is a very well populated neighborhood. There's a lot of kids and seniors and they wanted this gone. You can see all the trash piled up. This abandoned home on Longview, a target for illegal dumpers. They left all this junk and debris a few weeks ago. Neighbors who live here reaching out to help me Hank via our help desk at clickondetroit.com because they'd had enough. What do you think when you see that trash in the neighborhood? It disappoints me. Yeah. Because I feel we can do better as citizens, mm -hmm. just yeah. period. As residents, I feel we can do better with the illegal dumping. Yeah. You feel you can't fit in your garbage can, go put it in someone else's garbage can so it don't be all over. Alicia and her sister live right down the street. They have nine children between them living in their home. They're younger kids. They love to play on this block, but their mother's now scared for their safety. Yeah, it is dangerous because it just don't be trash. It be other things too, like needles, condoms, and you've got liquor bottles. I got in touch with the city and this mess cleaned up almost immediately. All the trash and the debris now gone. The investigation now getting underway to find those responsible. In the meantime, city leaders want you to know if you are dumping, Remember, this is a crime with severe penalties. It's a lack of respect. You know, we live in these communities. It's not outsiders coming into our city doing it. It's a lot of times it's Detroiters doing it in their own community. And that's disrespectful not only to the city, but to your own neighborhood. Now that this mess is cleaned up, the focus will be on keeping it that way. If you spot illegal dumpers, call police right away. And it happens every year. The weather breaks, gets a little bit nicer. People are doing their spring cleaning. Unfortunately, some people dumping it in others' neighborhoods. Now, these illegal dumpers in particular, not the smartest crew. They left some addresses, investigators believe, on some of the items that were dumped. It may be a business not far from this location. That police investigation right now is moving forward, and there could be serious penalties. We're live here tonight on the east side. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank. Back to you. Progress on something that is just so exasperating. All right, Frank. And if uh, Hank, or Hank. <laughs> thing or Hank. Frank. Frank, yeah, Frank McGeorge. <laughs> if you need some help from Hank, you can connect with him directly through the WDIV help desk, just like those who tipped him off to this illegal dumping today. Visit help.clickondetroit.com or you can just go to the front page and then click the little question mark speech bubble at the top right. The QR code on your screen also takes you right to it. So we've got a lot of easy ways for you to go to get some help. Here we go, friends. United in amazement over a cosmic event. Spontaneous cheers from people who gathered in prime viewing spots such as Toledo for today's total solar eclipse. It did not disappoint. <laughs> Of course, only a small portion of the U.S. was plunged into total darkness. Here's a look at the path of totality spanning from southwest Texas up across the Midwest and parts of the Northeast. Now, we sent teams to three locations along that path, Luna Pier, Toledo, and Cleveland. And if you were watching it live on our air on Local 4 on Local 4 Plus, you know this was a moment these seasoned reporters will not soon forget. It was great to watch you all uh, uh, united in amazement. Kim Adams is in Toledo. Ashley Barrissey in Cleveland will start things off with Paula Tutman in Luna Pier. They got just the right amount of visitors, I think, today, Paula. Yeah, they did. The mayor says this was an unqualified success. I know I'm in Luna Pier, but how about this? Area code 313 for the Detroit metro area. That's what time we hit total or what, what's called totality. And take a look at the stage of this amazing show. So this is Luna Pier. Yes, we only got about 19 seconds, but this was about quality, not quantity. The first thing everyone noticed was it got chillier and then chillier still. It felt like the, the air changed, like not even just the temperature, but like it was 
I don't know. <laughs> it was like, I felt prickly. And then all of a sudden, it got dark. There was just a murmur. And then the excitement. <laughs> the time of totality, just at about 3.13. All of a sudden, there was this murmur. And then at the point of totality, people were cheering. The atmosphere just changed. It got really chilly. It it was almost not like it was this, it was like a sunset, but not. Fish poked their heads out of the water. The birds got quiet. And all of a sudden, excitement broke through the crowd at Luna Pier. It was light and then it was dark. I actually started crying from it because it just felt like something unearthly almost. Like, I don't know, it just felt like really, like a neat moment. Like you said, like we're all bonding together in the community and it just felt like we're all witnessing this like phenomenon in the sky. I've never seen anything like it before. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, as you can see it with your glasses on, and as soon as you take your glasses off, you just see this beautiful glare in the sky, and it was just amazing. It was incredible. I remember the lunar eclipse in 2004, and it was, this was, it beats it by 15,000 miles. Yeah, and also take a look at this. Uh, apparently on the other side of the eclipse, it's already summer. In Michigan, we've been watching people actually swimming in Lake Erie uh, for much of the day, except when it was actually uh, that point of totality where it was completely dark, but also Kim, who's in Toledo. It was freezing. It shows you the awe-inspiring warmth and power of the sun, because as soon as that sun was blocked out, it wasn't cold. It was freezing. What was it like in Toledo? It was about the same, Paula. I started recording the temperature right at the beginning of the eclipse, and we were at 70 degrees, and we dropped about 7 degrees, a little, little more than that, about 7.5 degrees here at the University of Toledo. And what a different scene it is tonight. It's hard to believe there were thousands of people here just a few hours ago, and the weather did cooperate. We had a really good view of the eclipse from here. We started with temps in the 70s, lots of sunshine, and then right before the eclipse, we started seeing those high, thin clouds move in, but those do not obscure the view, and it was totally fine. If you take a look at what we experienced here, same as you did, Paula. I mean, it got dark, and then obviously, when we went into totality, what you saw were like wisps, these white wisps coming around from the moon, from the sun and the reflection, and that's the sun's corona. That's the atmosphere of the sun, and because we had such good viewing conditions, we were able to see both the upper and the lower atmosphere, and in the lower atmosphere, it's the chromosphere, which is that red that you would see at the bottom if you were looking closely. One other thing that I noticed was, and you may have as well, and if you look at your camera and your pictures you took, see if you see a little tiny, it looks like a star, down about 15 degrees to the right of the corona. That was Venus. And then if you look about 30 degrees to the left in the upper quadrant of the corona, that was Jupiter. Mars and Saturn were a little bit harder to see, but there were scientists here that could see it. Now, you know, we get about two eclipses a year, so that's not all that rare. And scientists are able to study other eclipses, but usually it's not right in their backyard. So even though it was spectacular here for tourists, it was critical for scientists. Talk about what you learned from the eclipse today. Honestly, probably the most wonderful thing I learned is how excited everyone else gets with astronomical events like this. We are overjoyed at being able to share that. And what about the science? What were you looking for today, scientists? Some of the things we were looking for were changes in atmosphere, temperature, looking at behavior of animals, because briefly for about a minute and a half, it pretended like it was nighttime. So there was some interesting data that people are going to go over after that. Now, as I said, we get on average two eclipses per year. And you might be wondering, well, if we get a lunar eclipse when there's a full moon, why wouldn't we get it every month? Well, the reason is the moon's orbit has a five degree tilt. And because of that tilt, just that little tilt, we only get them twice a year. And totality in the United States the next one won't be for 20 years for scientists to study. I don't know about you, Ashley. I don't know if I could handle this every single month. Ashley Barrissey is live now in Cleveland with a look at the lunar eclipse from her point of view. Ashley? 
Yeah, Kim, there was a lot of pressure on the forecast as we've been talking about for days and boy did Mother Nature show up today for those of us across the Great Lakes. If you can see behind me, they're tearing down just as quickly of this total eclipse fest as they probably had everybody rolling in today. Over the last three days in total, we've seen 30,000, more than 30,000 people come through the gates here. And so, you know, Paula did a wonderful job at reflecting on the event and Kim, a spectacular job at breaking down the sign. So I want to take this time to give you the opportunity to experience the sights and sounds of totality. Seeing the smallest sliver of the sun and then everyone cheering for the moon uh, covering the entirety of it, I think, was um, the most exciting part. In just a matter of seconds, I'll be able to take these glasses off and... Now, we are now in complete darkness where we can take, oh my goodness, what an incredible, incredible view. It was great. I've always been a space kid, so I, like, I really love it. It was awesome. It was incredible. It was beautiful. It was magical. Um, it's not what I expected because I've never seen a full um, total eclipse, so it was, it was gorgeous. It was really nice. Okay. back out here live. We traveled to Cleveland to get as close to the center of that path of totality, which afforded us almost uh, four minutes of complete maximum coverage. And so it was a phenomenal experience, truly once in a lifetime, out of this world, whatever pun you want to use for the eclipse. But we had so many people here from Michigan, and that was one of the most special parts is to be able to just interact with our neighbors in Michigan who um, traveled down I-75 to experience this for themselves. Back to you, Devin they Karen. Jam-packed I-75 mm -hmm. as we ended up pretty much a parking lot there for a while. All right, Ashley, as you can imagine, my picks is filling up with images from this amazing day. One viewer sent us a shot from their telescope. This was the scene in Canton wow. just before the peak of the eclipse. What a shot that is. Now the expression on this young man's face over <laughs> Look at that. It, says, it looks like he's even wearing his pajamas, well, right? Karen H. and Livonia got this very cool shot of the eclipse. That's through some trees. That's gorgeous. And of course, it wouldn't be my picks without some pet there photos. Go. There you go. Here's Ollie from Ferndale being a very good boy by wearing his eclipse glasses. Uh, and here's another great one. Someone sent us oh, a wow. shot of a 1970 newspaper with an awesome headline looking ahead 54 years. Millions see eclipse next showing 2024. That looks crazy, That's right? Fantastic. <laughs> My favorite picture of the day. We invite you to share your eclipse pictures with us through My Picks at ClickOnDetroit.com. You can scan the QR code on your screen to go right there to the submission page. Great, great stuff.